What do you make of the Niners coaches not going to the combine? And it's not just the Niners coaches. It's a little bit of a trend this year. Coaches not going to the combine. What's up with that? Yeah, I think it's one of those situations where there's not as a, as a coach, what are you going to get? What are you gathering at a combine that you can't already see on hand the times? Who's the, who's the one that always does it? That's always there at the end. I'm not sure which one it is. Was it bulky? Maybe it was bulky. Maybe bulky. bulky. The hand time got to get that hand time, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know. Those as far as the coaches go, they can, they can do their thing at. at at least with the 49ers this year, right? The 49ers have a, a bunch of new guys on their staff, so they need to kind of get that group together because they're going to be having practices before we know it um, with their off-season program. So they need to get everybody kind of in and and and, and going and then the uh, let the personnel guys go out, do the interviews and, and those kind of things. And then you, they can watch the film off from the Combine in Santa Clara, and then they can bring in the 30 players. Was it 30 up to 30? I think that they can bring in to, to talk if they want to talk to them face to face and they can always pick up the phone. Like, like old uh, Bobby Turner used to do. You know, one reason why the Niners coaches aren't going to the combine. They don't have any coaches. <laughs> that's, that's what that's. No, the We're going to bring. Right. I mean, they're all gone. Like, there's no <laughs> wide receiver coach. Hey, what do you think of these? I don't have one. So to me, it seems like, like Kyle has a lot of work to do on his end. Like Phil is a coach of death. He does. He does. Yes. Death. Yeah, I mean, we know he, you know, he he's he uh, he he promoted the, the he's got his tight end coach and wide receiver coach figured out, but he still has other he has other coaches that he needs to figure out on the offensive side of the ball too. He needs quarterback to out coach is the big one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Quarterback coach, and yeah. maybe they don't even hire a quarterback coach until uh, until you know, right before training camp. That'd be the smart way yeah. to go based on who I think we both think they should hire. Right, because if it's back, they can't get him yet. Okay. Yeah. All right. The coach they can't go into the combine. Got to hire some coaches before they can go. Yeah, you need to. Yeah, you need to have. You either need to hire them or hire them, or you need, to, especially like, look at what they're getting on the on the defensive staff. They're they're they've just hired two kids basically out of college, uh, only a few years of experience for either one of them. Then uh, they've basically just been at the grad assistant level in college, and now they're going to become, you know, quality control guys uh, at the NFL level, which is very similar. The jobs are pretty much the same. A grad assistant and a quality control coach in the NFL are, are pretty much the same thing. So they'll be able to transition over, but they need to get those guys into the system. And um, it'll be interesting to see how they transition them. Maybe not having a first round pick plays into this somewhat as well, because I've, those first round picks are organizational decisions. You need the head coach to know the player. Maybe now he's just like, dude, it's the 61st pick. I trust you. <laughs> right, John, I don't care. I trust and, you. Yeah. Do and that's. Job. And that's it. And exactly. That's the other part of it too, right? They've been together for long enough where, where Lynch and Peters know what, what they're looking for in terms of the players and the type of player that, that Shanahan wants. So he, they can go out there and do the the grunt work and, you know, talk about who they're going to trade and all that kind of stuff and, and get that stuff going. Well, well, uh, Shanahan's out here doing his work with his, his coaching staff. It's true. And it doesn't sound like there's a whole lot of discussing that's happening right now on the Jimmy Garoppolo front. That's more like a, why don't you check back with us in about four to six months? <laughs> I, well, they said the trade, the, the trade's supposed to be done in this, you know, this month. That's what they, they're saying. I mean, it's what Schefter said. Schefter said that wrong. it's still going to be wrong. done. I still want spo- drama. I <laughs> want <laughs> drama. It's true. Kawakami said it too. And Kawakami said fourth round picks, two fourths. Two fourths? I'd take one. But as you said, it's smarter to get the conditional in 2023. Kyle, if you're listening, and I know you are, Take the conditional in 2023. It's a smart play. Yeah, or at least, at least maybe Debo can let him know. Debo blocked me on Twitter, which means he's definitely not going to be watching me on YouTube. That's how these things work. Merkin Avalo says maybe Kyle was focused in the Trey Lance offense this season and let the other coaches handle the O. Oh, that's why it was stale this season with flashes here and there. Kyle in his bag this upcoming season can't wait. I like that. Maybe he didn't go to the, maybe he didn't go to the combine because he's drawing up Trey uh, plays for Trey like he theoretically did last year. Yeah, maybe yeah, there you go. He's 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 working on his iPad. He's drawing up some new stuff that we haven't seen before. I really hope so. Can you Kyle, can you give Trey like a fair shot here? Kyle is always so dissatisfied with his quarterback and I can't. I I got it. Can you just have some enthusiasm like Harbaugh used to have for Kaepernick? <laughs> just be positive. Just be positive. That's your guy. You picked him. Mm-hmm. Stop acting like people forced you to Coach these guys instead of trading for players. Kyle is trading coaches for picks. Yeah, I mean that's why we have so many third round picks, right? Sure, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I don't. 
I don't know. I look at this whole thing, and as far as like the Trey Lance stuff and the new plays with with Lance, I I would rather. I just want to see. I just want to see them use Trey Lance in the way that they use Jimmy Garoppolo. Because if they do that, I think he's going to have a really good career. I know we're going to get some runs and things like that, but you just need to run your offense and 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 let him make the plays because he's going to play different than Garoppolo. Like, is he going to be a top ten quarterback in the NFL? That's to be determined. But. Mm-hmm. If you surround him the way you surrounded Garoppolo and call the games the same kind of way where it's run focused, uh, hard to lose, hard to fail. There's too much going your way. It's almost not asking the quarterback to do a whole lot. You're really not. No, I don't know. They're not. And if they, and and I just feel like you're going to, if they continue that, you're going to get more out of Lance anyway, because he's going to take those shots down the field that, that Garoppolo doesn't take or can't take. Yeah, I would think that Kyle Shanahan with the physically gifted quarterback who, you know, is a little rough around the edges, he could work with that. I would think he could work with that. I don't know if Dennis Allen can, but I think Kyle Shanahan can. I mean, he essentially did that with Jimmy. They're just their edges are rough in different areas. Yeah, and they're not that they're they're not that much different to begin with. I mean, other than the fact that Lance is bigger, stronger, and faster, yeah. they're they're pretty similar in the way that they play the game. You know, Garoppolo is more in the middle, Lance a little bit more to the outside. But it's something he just needs to get. The biggest thing with these guys is they need to get on the same page. Trey Lance talked about that um, during Super Bowl week about the need for him and and, and Shanahan to be seeing the game the same way. And really, yeah. for the front ers, that's the biggest that's the biggest issue facing this team is if those two guys can get on the same page because if they can then that's going to help things out because I think some of the some of the inconsistency we saw from from Lance in the beginning of games in, 15, in week five and week yeah. 17 was was Shanahan not quite them not seeing the game the same way like you know things being open and he's not throwing the ball because he doesn't see it the same way that Shanahan does right and Shanahan spoke about that a little bit too he also said like I don't really have a great feel of calling plays for him yet and we saw that in the first start like that was discouraging but as the mm-hmm. second start went along it was extremely encouraging I thought I the way Kyle called plays in the second half was exactly how I saw him call plays in, in training camp at times where it's like, I have a lot of confidence in this guy, which was nice because I don't really see him call plays like that ever. It's always like, I have no confidence in my quarterback. I'm the greatest. Let me do what I can do. It's been that way for half a decade. I know he wasn't in Atlanta, but it's nice to see Kyle get back to, hey, let's let him air it out. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. I like mm-hmm. that. Yeah, for sure. Oh. But this could all be for nothing. It could all be Jimmy Garoppolo again next year. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> that, we'll see. That'll be fun. I mean, I know you. I know you're you're hoping for it. That's uh, I'm right there with you. Hey Grant, nice jacket. Hope you're doing well, guys. Thank you, Jose Julio Flores Campos. Appreciate it. Yeah. Off topic. I feel like playing running back as a rookie takes a certain number of snaps to open your eyes, vision wise. Let Sermon cook. We haven't seen enough. Uh, I mean, that's 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 an interesting take. That's that runs counter to what John Madden always used to say. And John Madden's thing was, you know, running backs, you usually tell right away whether running back is going to be good or not because they either can see or they can't. What was interesting about Sermon and Banks before we go is when they were both drafted, everyone was like, "That's I don't see the fit. This is an outside zone team. I don't know how much of an outside zone team this is going to be. I mean, first of all, they, didn't, they did a lot of tosses. It wasn't exactly – they do a lot of stuff. They do a lot of gap scheme stuff. But now that they have Trey Lance – they might be a more straight ahead team. I don't know. Yeah, I think you're going to see. I think you're going to see both of those guys play a bigger role in the team in 2023. You know, coming up this season. Um, and I agree with that. That's that's the direction that they're they're going is is towards maybe a little bit bigger up front and more a little more power in the middle. I mean, that's the way that I saw Elijah Mitchell was a, a between the tackles kind of runner, and he he doesn't really get outside very often. Even when he's running the tosses, it's usually right off the edge. So uh, I, I think that. That's the direction right. they're going to take. Same with Sermon. I mean, the guy who gets to the edge is freaking Debo. Yeah. Debo and Mostert, if they bring him back. Uh, I didn't really even see Lance get to the edge. That was the, the biggest surprise of watching him in the NFL was his struggle to get to the edge. A lot of times it felt like he was throttling back and forth between second and gear, second and third gear. I was like, dude, can you just run as fast as you can to the sideline and see if you can beat a defender there? I, I, that was strange to me. What did you think about that? I agree that that was one of the biggest concerns for me is because, what? yeah, you know when when we watch him at, can do that, yeah, because when we watch him in North Dakota State, you see it when you watch him on film though in college, you saw him run a lot, but he didn't run outside a lot. It was usually between the tackles. It, yeah. That's it was very. That's why you and I both said the same thing. You know, he he was very the ball. It was mostly between the tackles, and yeah. you know, with with uh, 
you know, like power quarterback power runs and, and ISOs and things like that, where he had lead blockers and traps and stuff mm-hmm. like that, instead of the read option where he's taken off around the edge. And so I think that's the other yeah. piece is, does he have the, you know, we know that he's fast once he gets himself going, but does he have that ability to get going right now? Yeah. And I think we saw Kyle understand that about his skill set. He called those all those quarterback powers and traps, excuse me, uh, uh, draws in the first start, which is a, good for his skill set. But at the same time, it's not good for his long term durability. I think the best, the most effective runs for him will be scrambles. Scrambles. If you open up that A gap or B gap, goodbye. And I think John Elway used to do that a lot too. That's before my time. You'd have you, you'd have to know that better than me. No, I mean Elway. The out back in the day with Elway, it was always the the quarterback draw was was yeah. really it was the quarterback. The running was quarterback draw. They ran them usually a couple times a game on a quarterback draw. That otherwise, would be he effective. was that would be yeah. effective for Lance. Yeah. Otherwise, he was scrambling around and making plays like that. Yeah. And I can see I could see Lance doing all those things. I just don't yeah. want to see Lance being used as a running back anymore. That's that's my only concern. And they need to get. They, they've shown that it's he's not. The one thing that you need to be concerned about with with this offense moving forward with Trey Lance is they struggled in third and short and fourth and short situations with him and his starts. And yes. part of it, I think, was because instead of just running their offense, they were getting a little little cute by having yep. him be a part too big of a part of the running game. Yep, that's true. Um, I do want to point out the NFL's changed a lot, but uh, John Elway's com- a lot since the eighties and nineties. But John Elway's completion percentage for his career was fifty six point nine. I mean, mm-hmm. he had some great years where he completed less than – like he won the Super Bowl in 97, completing 55% of his passes. So the Shanahan's can work with a quarterback who isn't necessarily efficient but has big playability. They've won, his dad has won two Super Bowls with one. I mean, John Elway was a little bit different than Steve. Steve Young was highly efficient. John Elway was a little bit different. Yeah, John Elway was more of a push the ball down the field yes. quarterback. than yes. than And – that's yes. that's part of the reason why his his completion percentages were lower because he was pushing the ball and taking right. throws maybe maybe throwing in balls that you wouldn't want your quarterback yes. to throw but he felt like he had the arm to get it in there. Yeah. So completion percentage isn't necessarily the best tool to evaluate Trey Lance's readiness. Just pointing that out there. I'm not saying he's the next John Elway. I'm just saying if he's pushing the ball down the field, that's going to be good in and of itself. Mm-hmm. And that's what we saw from him. It is absolutely bring Harbaugh as a uh, and as in as a quarterback coach. <laughs> People don't <laughs> understand. These, these position coaches' jobs are not glamorous. They don't pay a whole lot, and you work, I mean, uh, the 14 hours a day, seven days a week. It's ridiculous. They're long long days, long hours, and, and you're, like you said, those guys aren't getting paid very much at all. You're in a new and, city every three years. It's not. It's tough. You have to find a wife who's cool with that, and, you know, kids who don't hate you. I mean, it's very hard lifestyle. Very yeah, hard and, yeah, there's no, there's no way that Jim Harbaugh would would do that. He's, he's 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 locked in Michigan. He's he's a Michigan man. He's always like, you got to get Joe Montana to be the quarterback coach. Do you understand how little he wants to do that? Are you kidding? <laughs> no, he's no Joe Montana wants no part of that. <laughs> he just wants to say how bad the Niners are doing and how everything they every decision they make is wrong. God love Joe <laughs> Montana. We have the same inclination on that one. Uh-huh. <laughs> anyway, it's a little bit of a shorter show today. Thank. Thank you for the four. Thank you, Jimmy Garoppolo, for providing today. Thank you, Adam Schefter. Thank you, 49ers. We are always appreciative when news drops. And uh, this is Combine Week, so we'll be learning a little bit about not a bunch of people who probably won't be 49ers. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. I can't wait. Yeah, probably. that's that's the thing. I, won't be, I don't think there's going to be too many of these guys that they are being highlighted that we're going to see coming around for the 49ers when, they're, when their pick comes up at 61, if that's where they're stuck. So uh, it's fun. Watch these guys run around, listen to people talk, usually some news breaks. So that's the good part yeah. about it. 